Hello everyone, Ray here. If you were impressed by the Xiaomi Mi Mix, you've probably heard of its sibling, which is the one we have here, another experimental high-end flagship from the same manufacturer. All we know, it is the Xiaomi Mi Note 2. Let's have a look. A 5.7 inches dual curve display on a Xiaomi phone, definitely a surprise. It does remind me of the Note 7, but the one we have here will not explode. It gives a totally different texture in hands. It has a more angular and simplistic approach compared to the Note 7. The chin and the forehead of the phones left plain and simple, not even a 2.5D curve. Screen to body ratio is also not the most aggressive approach. It shares a similar footprint as the 5.9 inches Mate 9. It is a two handed phone, for sure. Build quality though is impressive. First of all, it is 7.6mm thin, and not only does it curve, but also the symmetrical design borrowed from Samsung is just implemented flawlessly on this phone, and it is purely black. On the back, Xiaomi has managed to eliminate the camera hump on this 7.6mm thin chassis, but it also means it lacks optical image stabilization, but more on that later. Speaking of glass, it makes the aluminum frame so smooth that it feels like they are actually one piece. Maybe they say it's taken a step further, but we'll see. Up to this point, the build quality of the Mi Note 2 is far better than its predecessor. It is a much more mature and sophisticated product. Ok, here we've come to the flaws. 7.6mm thin, dual curve front and back, but the totally flat chin and forehead. It makes it so hard to grip. The feedback of the power button and the volume rockers is also on the weaker side. The buttons are simply not deep enough, the travel distance. But to be fair, it costs much less than a Samsung, Apple or even Huawei. Those trade-offs are actually minor issues. Overall, Xiaomi has improved their build quality a lot. Hardware-wise, the fingerprint sensor is on the front. Whether you like it or not, it's not the most accurate sensor I've used, but when it works properly, it's Huawei-like fast. Meanwhile, the Mi Note 2 does support dual SIM configuration, but unfortunately it is not an adaptable microSD card slot. That means no expandable storage, but 120 gigs of storage. Down to the bottom side, we've got a USB Type-C port with USB on-the-go support, a single speaker and a microphone. And this is how the microphone sounds like on the Xiaomi Mi Note 2. Not bad at all, really deep and rich. Back on the top, Xiaomi has kept the IR blaster, thumbs up. And there you go, a 3.5mm headphone jack. And another microphone which supports stereo recording. While on the front, we have an LED notification light right next to the earpiece. NFC is also there, but on the back, to be exact. Let's continue with the performance and features. A little disappointment here. The MIUI 8 still based on Android 6.0, but features wise, you can't get anything better than this. Customization is perfect. Not only can you switch between literally a dozen of transition animations, but also the customizable themes. All the gestures are here as well. Double tap to work is a must. The floating dock, however, I've got no idea why it's still there. And check out the navigation buttons. They have a similar design as the OnePlus 3T. That means we can switch the positions of the back and the recent apps key. Always handy to have. What's more, we can also give a long press secondary command. But the selection is not comparable to OnePlus approach. The one-handed mode, however, is considerably the best out there. Before it actually activates the one-handed mode, it asks your permission. And we can even pull the window to either the left or the right by swiping along the navigation buttons. Now the dual space, dual system feature. It is absolutely amazing. It's not the dual apps or secure folder we've seen on other phones, but instead it creates a completely fully functional system alongside the main one. And they are separated like two phones. You can't change or even see any apps or files on the other system. And while we switch back to the other system, we can further secure our data via setting up a fingerprint or other forms of password. Back to the gallery app. Now you can see the picture I just took in System 2 is not here. 
So all your apps, files and data in the other system are actually invisible in system 1. Of course, we still have the standard Drew Apps feature. So in System 1, we can log into two Facebook accounts, plus the one in System 2, we have three accounts on one phone. Impressive. Performance of the Mino 2 is also top notch before the S8 comes out. It rocks a Snapdragon 821 processor, 6GB of LPDDR4 RAM, and 120GB of UFS 2.0 storage. More or less the same as the Xiaomi 5S Plus we've tested last time. So according to the standard apps opening speed test, that refer up the same cluster of apps on all the tested devices. The results almost the same as the 5S Plus, which means it is also one of the fastest phones that run a Snapdragon 821 processor. In the second round, the Mi Note 2 succeeded to keep all the apps and games in memories. The only minor lag appeared when I tried to open Perfect Angle, but that's it. Overall, the performance of the Mi Note 2 is close to the Mi 5S Plus and the Mate 9. Again, Android phones with 6GB of RAM simply flies like an iPhone. Apps switching is instant. Also with the Adreno 530 graphics processor driving a 1080p screen, gaming performance second to nothing. The only downside of the Mi Note 2 is Android 6.0. Here we've come to a controversial part, the camera. The specs actually really promising, a 22.56 megapixels camera with an f2.0 aperture, PDAF autofocus, dual tone LED flash, and it does support electronic stabilization. But the pixel size is a bit on the smaller side, at 1 micron, and it lacks optical image stabilization. The features come with it, though, is more than I've expected. Just keep holding the volume down button. It even doesn't wake the phone up, but actually it captured a couple of dozens of photos quietly. How legal is that? The straighten mode, however, it keeps all your shots perfectly level against the horizontal line, no matter how far it is away from it. Another essential feature, manual mode, or the ISO manual white balancing Kelvin, long exposure up to 32 seconds, manual focus, you've got the idea. So image quality, the very first impression is given to me is how vibrant and saturated the photos look. Also the super high-res sensor. Under broad daylight, both color reproduction and clarity are second to nothing. With the presence of auto HDR, dynamic range is also one of the best out there. The shadows and the highlights are handled perfectly, without any distortion. Even if I directly point it to the sun, the shadows on the front is well exposed, looks natural, with fantastic details and saturation. The problem is, if you hated the saturated colors on the Pixel or Samsung's flagships, you'll get the same exaggerated vibrancy here. Sharpening effects also slightly too much, but it makes the shot look really crisp from distance. Indoor and low light performance could be a problem for the Mi Note 2, as it lacks optical image stabilization. But the first one we have here, not the most challenging scene, with plenty of natural lighting inside the restaurant, image quality remains top notch. A bit darker, but with clear separation between the light sources and the shadows, details are still there, but we can see artifacts started to kick in. Together with those sharpening effects, far from the best. Inside the tube station, with complex light sources, it handled the exposure flawlessly. With all the saturated colors, but the way it cleaned up all the noise, pulled it away from the top tier camera phone title. Sunset time, the details are fine, but not great. The white balance, however, is not accurate at all. Compared to the HTC U Ultra, almost all the photos I've taken during the sunset time were ruined with a bluish tint. Saturation still there, but the white balance. There is actually one more feature that's worth our applause, the panorama mode. 
You're right. Every phone is capable of taking panorama, but the Mi Note 2 handles the exposure exceptionally smooth. It also merges all the shots like one piece. Back to image quality. At night, due to the lack of optical image stabilization, the auto mode on the Mi Note 2 kept shooting with 1 over 20 to 1 over 15 seconds. The f2.0 aperture is wide, but not the widest. The 1 over 2.6 inch sensor with almost 23 megapixels on it. The small 1 micron pixels add up and contribute to the poor low light performance. Digital noise are literally everywhere. Color saturations also become much more pale than under good lighting. Fortunately, we do have manual mode on this guy. Slightly long exposure time like 1 over 4 seconds. With ISO kept under 400 or 800, all the noise gone. And the vibrant colors returned. Details are also great, actually comparable to the U Ultra, which we have proven the camera's indeed one of the very best. But you know, it took me 4 to 5 times to get it exactly stable and crisp. Without optical image stabilization, you will have to pay extra effort to replace that with human image stabilization. Video stabilization though is impressive. It keeps things stable even when I was walking, and it does support 4K recording, but over sharpening and aggressive noise reduction make it not the phone to produce serious videos. And the videos could be laggy and choppy if you move too fast. Overall, fantastic image quality under good lighting, fine but not impressive indoor performance. While the small pixels and the lack of optical image stabilization, not the phone for night photography. Multimedia experience, the Mi Note 2 comes with a 5.7 inches curved AMOLED display. A massive display with all those punchy colors, video watching and gaming experience are of course brilliant. And thanks to AMOLED technology, pixels are illuminated themselves. Black is inky pure deep black, without any sort of light bleeding at any angle. Speaking of angle, viewing angle is great, but hold on, this 5.7 inches display only packs 1920 x 1080 pixels. Normally it's not that noticeable on a smartphone screen. But on this particular screen, pixelation is much more noticeable than all other similarly sized 1080p phone, C7 Pro, OnePlus 3T, even the 6 inches C9 Pro. The white balance also way too greenish, put it right next to the HTC U Ultra. It will take you some time to get used to it. The single down firing speaker also makes it not the best smartphone for media consumption. But volume and audio quality wise, it is loud with adequate mids and bass. Headphone audio output in the meantime is a huge step up from the Xiaomi 5S Plus. There's a new feature, HD audio. Just to keep it turned on, it gives so much clearer high frequencies and much less noise, especially when playing compressed audio files. It also gives mainstream flagship volume with respectable audio quality. The speaker and the headphone jack score a passable grade, but the display. See if the battery can make us forget about the display. And yes, the whopping 4070 mAh battery powering a 1080p AMOLED display. According to the standard battery life test, 67% of the battery was left untouched after 4 hours of YouTube videos playback at maximum screen brightness. While the more all-rounded test that we play YouTube videos for one hour at 50% brightness, then scroll along the timeline for another hour, finally play Clash Royale for another hour. Altogether, 3 hours of media consumption drained only 36% of the battery, is talking comparable battery life to the Mate 9 and the Mate 9 Pro, simply the best we can get. With Quick Charge 3.0 support to complete the package, battery life could be one of the main reasons to get this phone. A pure black, dual curved, symmetrical designed phone with top notch build quality, no camera hump at all. Features loaded, especially the breathtaking dual system dual apps feature. Performance also second to nothing. 
the Mi Note 2 also captures impressive, saturated, crisp and clear photos in daytime. With the longest battery life we can possibly get, it is a buy, isn't it? See if you can live with a super slippery dual glass design, super camera in low light and the greenish, not the sharpest screen. Wow, really glad to see Xiaomi is finally catching up in this high-end flagship game. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed watching this video. Like it if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos like this and there are also two more videos here for you to watch next. See you next time.